Hello and welcome to the Fit and Free podcast. This is a podcast for women who want it all, to feel strong and confident in their bodies, as well as enjoying a sneaky mug on a Friday night. I'm an exercise physiologist and sports nutritionist here to teach you how to achieve your body goals without food and your body controlling your life. So let's jump in. Hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, I have a special guest joining me, Jeannie. She is a badass business owner as well as an inspiring powerlifter. She is strong AF. In today's episode, we're breaking down some really important things in terms of why most people are not seeing results in their training, how to move through gym anxiety, how to start shifting your mindset from I want to be smaller to I want to get stronger and all the benefits that come with that. And before we jump in, if you could take a moment of your time, open up Apple Podcasts and write a quick review. It really, really does help and support this channel. So let's jump in. Hello, Jeannie. Thank you so much for jumping on the podcast with me today. First of all, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're at and what you do? Hi, thank you so much for having me, Laura. Um, So I am Jeannie and I'm a personal trainer and I run my own personal training business. So I call it Jeannie V Fitness. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I've been a PT for about three years now, worked in like the group training space for maybe like a year prior to that. And yeah, kind of worked in brand sales and marketing for about nine years until I made the dive into PT full time. Wow, I didn't know it was nine years in the marketing space. Yeah, yeah, it was a long time. I was like, wow, I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like that, right? <laughs> If someone's older listening to this, they're like, no, no way, you're so young. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. I know all my clients like, oh, I thought you were like 20 something. I'm like, yes, tell me more, please. <laughs> uh, I love that. Um, so that's an interesting journey from like, you know, corporate and then turning personal trainer. First of all, what was that like? Corporate, there's a lot of politics. And I think that was the main reason why I left. Um, like I loved my job and it was awesome. I got to make really cool like TV commercials, like mm. outdoor signage at like the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Like I got to do some really awesome stuff. But I think it just got to the point where you're kind of like, what am I doing with my life? Like, what is this mm. nine to five grind? Well, not really nine to five. There were Friday nights where I'd be on the couch, like still working and canceling dinner plans. Mm. Um, but yeah, you kind of reach a point where you're like, what am I doing? Like, is this fulfilling? And then, yeah, I kind of got to a point where I was like, you know what? I don't want to work for someone else. I don't want someone yeah. to tell me what to do. And I'm like, I'd just rather do my own thing and do something that I actually love. So I started doing like PT and group fitness on the side and then, yeah, it kind of just went from there. Oh, that's such a cool story because I know there'd be so many people out there like, you know, wanting to take the plunge on something but then not having the actual balls to do it because it's freaking terrifying. And just a short story, I met Jeannie. We are actually doing a mentoring group together and I met you when you were transitioning through that period when you're leaving that corporate and it was such a celebration because it was risky, right? Like you left a really good salary and all this stuff. And then like, look at you now, how long has it been now? Uh, Like just over a year now it's flown by. Yeah. Cause I remember when we started that mentorship, you had just left your corporate job to Mm. do it full time as well. And I was like, Oh my God, I need to do what Laura's done. (laughs) And that's a beautiful thing about being in those like group spaces. It's just like, it's so nice to be around other people that are going through the same thing. So anyway, we digress. Talk me through. I see you absolutely killing it on social media. Like anyone, you need to go check out Jeannie because she is strong AF, right? Like she is a really strong power lifter and she is lifting some heavy weights. Can you tell us how you got interested in it? How did you start? What got you into it? <sighs> Yeah, I mean, I started out at the gym where I was like, oh, you know, like I want to lose weight, like as every female yeah. ever says when they start out at the gym. I, mean. <laughs> I just want to be skinny. <laughs> um, and I had no idea what I was doing. So I spent a lot of time. So I wanted to try and do weights, but I was like, shit, I don't know what to do. So I started doing classes like body pump mm-hmm. and things like that. So I was like, oh, yeah, that's a good place to start. And then eventually I'll venture out into the big bad world of like the weights floor. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but then even then you kind of, you know, you sort of train to like 
just be skinny rather than sort of be strong. Like you're just mm. training to lose weight so that you can eat and things like that. Like you're not eating to train, you're essentially training to eat. And <laughs> then I just remember back like in 2018, a girlfriend of mine, she was just like, she told me about how she started lifting weight. She's like, oh, you should try it. Like it's so much fun. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? Like, let's give this a crack. Let's see how I go. So I bought my first online strength training program, awesome. one of those cookie cutter programs that now I'm like don't do it no I'm joking <laughs> do it I think it's such a good thing to start out with yeah. um just to kind of get the ball rolling so that you kind of learn how to do things like that and some of the exercises I was like I don't know what I'm doing so you kind of watch other people and then or you look it up on YouTube um but yeah I think ever since then like I just fell in love with it I was just like wow like this mm. is so much better than running on a treadmill for like 30 minutes and feeling like I'm gonna die and pass <laughs> out <laughs> And then I think I just, the more I kind of went into strength training, I was like, oh yeah, like, you know, one day I'll like compete. Like, I always thought it was just for fun. Like in my head, I never actually thought I'd do it. Yeah. And then um, my partner, he was just like, you just got to sign up for a competition. Otherwise you're never going to do it. So I was like, Mm. oh, what do you mean? He's like, just sign up for like a novice competition and just do it. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah, I just started to do folks a bit more from powerlifting because I think for me it was more about I wanted to see how far I could push myself. I wanted Mm. to see like, you know, how much I could really challenge my body um, like physically and mentally because, I mean, with lifting, especially powerlifting, honestly, like some of the guys at the gym, they're like, it's 90% mental. Like you just got to get out of your head. Mm -hmm. and I just wanted to get strong AF because I think to me like that's better than being skinny because I feel like you know you want to be better for yourself and I find that having strength and having the muscle and things like that Mm -hmm. it's not about the way you look but it's about you know things that you do every day in your life as well and for me like I don't do powerlifting or competitions to take out first place even though my coach is like you want you need to be like the first (laughs) under 63 in the like state and I was like "Uh, I do it because I like want to be the best like version of myself and Mm -hmm. I compete with myself when it comes to comp Mm -hmm. um, and I try not to worry about what everyone else does because I think you are your own worst enemy when you Mm -hmm. start comparing yourself to other girls <laughs> absolutely and I absolutely love that mindset shift that you've created and you're so right in terms of like I think a lot of women do start there I started there myself as well absolutely it was always how can I make myself smaller how can I make myself yeah. smaller but then like when you go into like a scary weight room and the boy section as I've heard it before is when you start you know you start getting stronger and then when you feel that mm. and then the carry on from that onto other areas of your life and then it just makes you feel empowered, right? Like when you can do your first chin up or pull ups or whatever, it's just like you feel like such a badass. <laughs> I like- know. Oh my God. It's so good. Like the other day, literally at the gym, I did like six pull ups. I was like, holy crap. Yeah. I've never done six before. <laughs> such an that- achievement. And that's so wild. And it's so cool to sit there and sit here and celebrate that. But let's take it back a little bit and talk me through did you ever experience like feelings like intimidation and a bit of gym anxiety when you first transitioning into the you know into that section oh 100 percent. like I remember the first day that I signed up for the gym um it was at anytime fitness in the city when I was still working in an office I literally walked in and I was like what is this dark and dingy place and I'm like <laughs> the music's so loud I was like there's people like sweating and grunting and there was all these big oh, scary the like yeah the grunts and like what's all these big scary weights that are around I'm like what the heck like you just feel so intimidated like you honestly feel like a fish out of water you're like what the fuck am I doing here like it's scary Mm. um and honestly like I think you'd be abnormal for it for you to not feel intimidated by the weights room Mm -hmm. um and I think for me that's sort of why I started doing a few more classes and things just so I get used to it but also I actually um the funny thing is that now I'm a PT, I actually decided to, you know, sign up for the three sessions with a PT at the gym mm-hmm. when I first signed up as well. Cause I was like, I just need someone to show me what to do because I have no freaking idea what I'm doing here. And I think for me, like that helped a lot, just having someone to show me the ropes yep. and kind of allow myself to have someone to take me around the gym floor, around the boys section or the weight yep. section, you know, yeah. and just get over that intimidation. And it's sort of like, you know, it's 
a double-edged sword, right? Because you go to the gym, but you kind of don't want to go because you feel intimidated. Yep. But to get over that and to start building up that confidence, you've got to go. Like you've got to do it. Mm. You've got to do it. You've got to create that routine. Um, so yeah, it's hard. Like you just I find for like some of my clients, I just tell them, I'm like, if you're scared of like going to the gym because you know, you're intimidated by the weights or whatever, go when it's a bit quieter, yeah. when there's less people around. Um, because that's gonna be one of the best times to go. And the other thing I always tell them is, you know, no one's staring at you. Everyone's yeah. there to support you um yeah. and like help you if you need the help. Like I remember I used to ask a few people like, hey, like how do you do that one? Yeah. Or I'd sit there and watch people use a machine and then be like, oh, so that's how you use it. And then I'd go and <laughs> give it a go when like I'm thinking like no one's around. <laughs> <Love that>. <laughs> <laughs> I've done but that too. Like, yeah. <laughs> But I feel like so many of us women like can relate and like we've all like a lot of us have been through it. And mm. yeah, it's just trying to like build up that confidence to just get to the gym. Like I think the biggest thing is like stepping foot through that door mm -hmm. um, and just trying to do it on a regular basis just to get over that, you know, that intimidation or the scariness of the weights because the weights aren't that scary when you no. start using them. Like there's one <laughs> kilos, like plates. And it's funny because with my clients, I always tell them I'm like my favourite plate is the half kilo plate. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, what the hell? They're like, you lift so much. I'm like, no, nope, my favourite's the half kilo. It's so cute. <laughs> I'm exactly the same, like the not the half kilos, but I love those 1.25s because oh they're actually, God. especially like when you're in training upper body, like there's a massive jump in between, like if you yeah. go up by like, you know, two and a half, like those yeah. 1.25s are needed. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. And like when you're benching, right? Even yeah. 1.25 jump, you're like, this is too much. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, um, but you summed it up so beautifully in terms of giving some really good advice in that, in terms of like, building some confidence with someone, like whether that's an in-person personal trainer, whether that's having an online coach, just having someone that can help you build that actual confidence, because that's going to give you so much self-confidence in order to, yeah. you know, follow through and continue doing it. And the other thing you said in terms of like just committing and getting your foot through the door can be like the biggest step. So such helpful advice there. I wanted to have this conversation with you because I know you've probably heard it a lot because I hear it all the time in terms of women are afraid of lifting weights because they're afraid it's going to make them bulky. And again, if you go onto Jeannie's Instagram, you can see that Jeannie's not bulky and she's like deadlifting 150 kilos. Okay, guys, like it's pretty insane. So have you heard that before? And how do you help women overcome the fear of that? Oh man, if I had a dollar for every time a client tells me, I'd be a millionaire, but in saying <laughs> I don't have a million clients. So like, you know what I mean? You catch my joke. But you know, like lifting weights definitely won't make you bulky. I mean, like you and I, Laura, like we've been doing this for years. <laughs> Neither of us look like Arnold Schwarzenegger at this point. Not even I close. wish. <laughs> I know. I'm like, damn it, I just want muscle. <laughs> yeah, legit. Bulky um, Oh, it's so hard. It's a lot harder for us to build muscles than men because we're a lot smaller. Our mm -hmm. hormones are different. Like guys have so much more testosterone than us, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, it's yeah, a little absolutely. unfair that they can build muscle a whole lot quicker. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if you want to build a great physique like those female bodybuilders and things out there, like it takes years and years of training and dedication to get to that point. But even those females, like they're not bulky. They are lean AF. Yeah. <laughs> um, and a lot of my clients, you know, they come to me because they want to tone up and I'm like so many of yours do as well. Yeah. And you like the thing with toning up, which I think is often misconstrued is what toning up really means. means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So toning up, it really means you want to increase your muscle to fat ratio, which means you want to drop the body fat, but you want to try and build as much lean muscle mass as possible. And that's why mm -hmm. you need to lift weights so that you can look more toned as well. And I think for them to kind of understand what it really means, Mm -hmm. um they're like oh okay so that's what we're looking for like it's more of like a body recomposition rather than you know like trying just, to lose a whole ton of weight that. or something just your yeah. weight just your weight yeah yeah and I mean if they're like oh I don't want to get bulky I'm like look at me I am not bulky <laughs> <laughs> I'm evidence I'm, no, I'm nowhere near bulky mm. um but you know it's scary for women at first because 
it's just the way that it's been portrayed for so long that weights make you bulky but I think what's great is now we're seeing more and more women in the gyms lifting weights and things that it's becoming so normal that I think a lot more women are open to it and you know when my clients they come to me and they know that I'm all about strength training and getting them like really strong once Mm. they start getting into that routine and they start doing it for a few weeks they notice the difference in how they're feeling like they just feel so much better they feel a bit more confident and you can see how they actually start to love lifting weights they're like oh my god I did that I'm like yes you did that and they're like thank you so much I'm like I didn't do anything I just (laughs) tell you what to do and you're adding more and more weight each week or you're doing more reps and Mm. you know like lately I've been hearing a lot from my clients they're like oh you know it's so much easier like I pick up my daughter she feels so light now like things like that like just things that they do every day it makes it a whole lot easier like you know carrying their groceries like they're like oh we can carry like the 20 for like bottles of water in like one <laughs> go like it's nothing yeah um and you know that's why I love strength training so much because it's not just about the way you look it mm. makes you feel so much better you're happier your mental state is better but it just improves your overall like quality of life as well mm-hmm. yeah yes and I couldn't agree with you more than that like personally like we spoke about just before like I definitely got it in it for the aesthetic reasons but as you I get guess. strong yeah and as you but as you get stronger and the flow on and ripple effect that it has on the rest of your life is absolutely phenomenal and I had the same experience right in terms of one of my clients she's got two little boys and she sent me a photo of one was at the front and one was on the back as a piggyback and she was like oh my god I can lift them so easily and take them up to bed and it's such like an empowering feeling being able to have that and it's just so powerful so yeah I love it so much yeah. Now I really want to bring it back to you and I want to pick your brain because what you're lifting in the gym, like I've already said, is such an inspiration for a lot of people. What does it really take to get that strong? What are some of your like day-to-day rituals, habits that really support your lifestyle, I guess, and your training? Um, For me, honestly, like it's a whole lot of discipline. Like I know everyone's like, oh, you know, like I need the motivation. I want to be motivated and things like that. But honestly, like I'm not motivated to go to the gym every day. Some days I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, do I have to train today? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But it's just about having that discipline and just creating those habits every day and just building on it. And because, you know, for example, like you and I, like we've been doing it for years and the more that we go to the gym, um, the more that you fall in love with it and it just becomes a habit and it becomes discipline. Like it's just a routine for me. And, you know, for me, because I know what my goals are in terms of I just want to get really strong and I want to lift X amount of weight. And it's not so much like it's I don't do it because I want to fall on on Instagram because I want everyone to see it. But there's nothing wrong with that, which is fine because I still post some things like that as well. (laughs) But I think just having that deeper why and that deeper meaning as to why you want to train Mm -hmm. um, helps a lot. And because I'm motivated by kind of how I feel and what I want for myself as a person, like it definitely helps a lot Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of daily rituals, like for me, like sleep. That's one of the biggest things that affects how my performance is. Mm -hmm. Like I am the kind of person who needs like seven to eight hours of sleep. I'm in bed by 9.30. I'm like asleep by latest, maybe like 10.30 if I'm pushing it Mm -hmm. because I'm up at like 5.30 every day for work. So it's like making sure that I'm getting enough sleep because that helps me recover. And I know when I haven't slept well because it affects kind of what I do at the gym and my performance and things like that. And honestly, like sleep is free. Like it's the cheapest form of recovery you can get. No. (laughs) Like if people just get on top of their sleep, like I know everyone's got really busy lifestyles and not everyone, I don't have kids, so I don't have to, you know, stay up and things like that. But it's just trying to get us like those seven to eight hours of sleep is one of the biggest things for me. And another thing is just making sure that I'm eating enough food, yeah. um, especially when it comes to lifting weights. I always make sure that I get enough protein in my diet because that's what's going to help me like grow muscle and help me recover. And I'm eating to sort of fuel my body because especially if like I know I've got a really hard session coming up at the gym, I'll make sure like I carb up, whether it's like I always eat before I train because I sort of train like mid-morning um 
So I'll like make sure I have enough carbs because that's what's going to give me that energy to train. Yeah. Um, I've actually got a joke in the gym with a couple of the guys there because there was a session where we were all there. And I was like, oh my God, my deadlifts feel amazing today. And then I was like, oh, because I ate like a whole plate of fried rice before this. <laughs> and it was amazing because the week after I lifted the same weight and I was like, oh, this doesn't feel as easy. I was like, it must be the fried rice. <laughs> Absolutely the fried rice. <laughs> But for me, it's just, you know, not being scared to eat food because you yep. need that fuel for your body. Like I always say to my clients, like your body needs food, like food is fuel for your body the same way that a car needs petrol to drive, like you need yep. it. And then the other thing is just probably time management for me because my schedule's pretty hectic and you know as a PT it's kind of like with my face-to-face sessions you know it's like first thing in the morning before everyone goes to work and then you have a whole chunk of your day to kind of do your own thing work on the business go to training do this do this run errands and then you've got to be back by a certain <laughs> time because then you've got your afternoon and evening clients once they finished with work so I always make sure that I block out time in my calendar so I know mm-hmm. that you know I need to train and I make it like I'm happy to kind of move the time around, but I need to make sure I go to the gym that day. And especially my sessions, because I do powerlifting. So my sessions are like two, two and a half hours. I'm standing at the gym because I'm like on my phone for five minutes between sets, just resting. <laughs> um, so I think for me, it's just, yeah, blocking out that time and just managing my time. And if I put it in my schedule, like I'm a to-do list kind of girl, like yeah. if it's on my to-do list, I'll do it. I'm like, I like ticking it off. <laughs> I love it. That is so powerful in everything you just said because it's like it's so common how people are looking for the special thing or this kind of diet or this kind of training in order to Mm. achieve a certain result. And like the things that you spoke about that has really helped you sleep, discipline and setting priorities. If more people focused on those three things, I guarantee there would be more people getting results. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I listened to a podcast of Matt Fraser. I don't know if you know who he is. Yeah. If you don't know who he is, he's the fittest man on earth that won the CrossFit Games, I think, like six years in a row or something. And the first thing that he mentioned in his schedule as well was the importance of sleep. So guys, this is your reminder how important sleep is because it's like you said, it's people are not utilizing this resource that's absolutely free. Yeah, yeah. And there's a really good podcast. So I think his name is Matt Walker, Matthew Walker, the Mm -hmm. guy who talks about sleep a lot. There's a really good podcast that he's done and you listen to it and it's so good. It's called, I think, Why We Sleep or something. And he's got a book as well. Yeah, he's the guy that wrote the book. Yeah, Yeah. that's on my to read list of books. Mm. At the moment, I already know like the importance of sleep. So it's kind of like put down on the the list because I, that's something I personally prioritize as well. Like I am the same as you. I'm in bed at nine o'clock and (laughs) I need my my eight hours so oh my gosh yeah (laughs) living through this routine and this habit what are some benefits that you have gained whether they've been mental or physical from this sort of style and living this way of life really yeah like so many benefits like I just feel like I'm a happier person overall my mood is better like mentally I think I just feel so much better like when I'm having a bad day or I'm feeling super stressed out I find that you know if I train or I go to the gym it really takes my mind off or even just going for a walk like you yeah you don't have to go to the gym just to you know de-stress you can just go for a walk clear your mind yeah and you know when you're doing things like that you're just so focused on getting the task done you're so focused on lifting that weight getting through that set or you're so focused on your walk or you're you know drowning out on your walk because you're listening to a podcast or some music and things like that And you just get that mental clarity, you know, like you just feel so much better kind of after you go to the gym or you go for a walk. And yeah, like mentally, I can't even begin to express how much better I feel. And for me, like physically, like I feel like I looked and probably felt the best I've ever felt. Mm -hmm. Like I am five kilos heavier than what I was like 10 years ago. And you can like probably relate, Laura, like because muscle weighs a lot more than fat, but we look like I look better. Like I'm so much stronger. I've got more muscle. I'm like so much more toned. And I remember thinking, you know, when I was in uni, I used to be like, oh, I feel so fat. I can't believe I'm like this. And then I look at photos and I'm like, God damn, I was skinny back then. Like what was wrong with me? (laughs) Yeah, I totally feel you on that. I was exactly the same. Like I was the person that was constantly, I'm so fat. My stomach is fat. I look fat. Yeah. And I'm the same. I look back in those photos, like, holy crap, like I was not fat. I was so small. 
<laughs> and like I think for me as well like um you know I'm Asian and I had Asian friends in uni <laughs> and usually Asian girls like you know they're really petite they're really small but I'm not your mm. typical petite Asian build and mm. like my sister was like a petite Asian and things like mm. that as well so you kind of surrounded I was surrounded by people like that so I was like oh you know like I feel like I'm like fat and blah 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 because they're mm. all size mm. six but I'm like mm. a size eight Mm. so yeah it's just crazy to think that and I'm like wow like I look back at photos I'm like gosh like look at the size of my arm Mm, that must have been so hard because like our conditioning and where we grow up like it's pivotal right and to our beliefs and how we feel about ourselves and our body image so that's a really interesting situation that you're put in how were you able to kind of move through that where was there a turning point into like it's going back to that same mindset as well of like moving from, you know, smaller to stronger in that Mm. space. How did you navigate through that? What are some mindset shifts that you had to make and how were you Um, able to do it? Yeah. Like it wasn't easy. Like, you know, some days you still kind of like look at the scale and oh gosh, Mm. (laughs) I'm like, oh, I'm feeling like a fat day. But I think it's that mindset shift from, you know, being wanting to be like skinny, fat, like Mm. not skinny fat but you know what I mean like skinny fat to kind of skinny strong and I think because I kind of dived headfirst into like lifting weights and things like that I really just focused on doing my own thing like I stepped away a lot from like cardio and things because I wanted to lift weights and learn how to do those properly and things Mm. like that and you so when you're at the gym there's people in that environment who are like-minded as you like you know they're there to get strong and things like that so you're kind of the more you surround yourself with people who are like-minded I find that that helps a lot as well so you kind of step away like you not step away like obviously I'm still like they're my best friends Mm. um yes and I'm still friends with them obviously but you know you kind of open up your network of people Mm -hmm. to people who have similar interests as you so for me like I think that helped a lot in terms of like that mindset shift as well Mm -hmm just having a really supportive environment around me, people who want to get strong, people who aren't worrying so much about, you know, what size they are or like how skinny they are and things like that. And I think that's kind of where I sort of like shifted, like I kind of digressed from, you know, when like my uni girls, like when I'm friends with them, like they look amazing still and things like that, but their type of training is so different to what I do now, but I love what I do. And, you know, and it's so cute because they're so supportive and they're so in awe of what I do in terms of like my strength training, my powerlifting, and they're so supportive. And it's quite nice to see, you know, like having such a supportive network around you really helps Mm -hmm. as well. And even kind of, (laughs) it's quite funny. So like my parents, like they're very traditional, um, Mm -hmm. you know, like never touched a weight in their life. Like (laughs) I grew up not playing sport. Can you believe that? Um, Yeah, like it was all about like being book smart and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, But like now that like what I do, my Mm -hmm. dad, it's quite funny to see how surprised he is, like what, you know, at what I do and like my strength, they're always like, oh, don't hurt yourself. I'm like, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Or he'll ask you to help carry something. And it's like, I don't know, like a 20 kilo bag of cement or something or a 25 kilo bag of rice. And, you know, he's like, yeah, like we'll do it together. You grab one end and I'll grab the other end. And I'm like, dad, just leave it. Like I'll do it. I got this. And then he, (laughs) he, yeah, he stands there and watches me move it all. And he's just standing there, like just in awe of what I'm doing. And I'm like, it's not that big of a deal. I'm like, you know, that's like a 20 kilo bumper plate we're good (laughs) but you know it's if you know Asian parents they'll never tell you how impressed they are by you or like how proud they are of you but you just watch on your their face and you're like oh yeah I'm like I know I impressed you (laughs) oh that is so beautiful in so many ways yeah yeah so it's just I think it's also like the element of surprise that you get from people around you that helps as well Mm. Yeah. yeah I love that there's definitely been moments like this morning in the gym for example like Neil's my partner he's not into lifting weights it's not his thing he's a surfer guy so but being back here there's not regular surf so he's been training with me and then this morning we we're doing hip thrust and we we're hip thrusting the same weight and that for me just made me feel so good about it because I was <laughs> how like, good is that <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that one that's um, so good <laughs> 
Um, I love how you brought up how you had to like distance yourself from some people. And I personally actually went through that as well. It's like, I love that you brought up that creating a supportive environment and spending time with people who are more like-minded with you, because I know that's such a hard thing, right? Like when you get caught Mm -hmm. up in your body and with food and like gym challenges and training and X, Y, and Z, it's so much talk in and around your body. Like, what are you eating? Like, Mm -hmm. how are you training? And I definitely had to break up, not necessarily break up with people, but like intentionally like seek out, you know, things that were really fulfilling for me and filling up my cup that had nothing to do with talking about our bodies. So that's a really good tip that people can take away from is like, have a look at who you're spending time with. Look at your environment. Look at what's in your community and the, you know, those five people that you spend the most time with is like a reflection of who you are. So yeah, that is such a good point that I didn't really think about. So Thanks for bringing that up. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad I could be of service. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go back to food because I know we love food. Absolute food is over here. Yes. And from your journey as well, because evidently like struggling with your body and starting in the same space as like what I did and then being able to move through and transition to strong. How did it look like with food for you? Was there any mindset blocks that you had to go over in, in terms of like learning how to fuel your body in terms of looking at it as fuel? Oh my God. Yes. Cause like you just get so like, I think when I first started out, it was, you're kind of like, Oh, I'm trying to, you know, lose weight and whatever. And I'm training to like balance out what I'm eating. And yeah. it was all about burning like creating, off burning off the calories, right. <laughs> you know, how many calories does half an hour on the treadmill do and things like that. <laughs> um, but like, I love food and you love food. And I've accepted the fact that I'm never going to have abs because yeah. I love food too much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and I think the biggest mindset shift was thinking about food as fuel for your body. So people Mm. often are like, oh my God, that's so high calorie. Oh my God. But what I think a lot of people don't realize is that calories is unit of measure for how much energy food has. So like you measure distance in meters, we measure food in calories. Um, so when you sort of start to, understand that you're like oh okay like so calories aren't bad um Mm. calories is literally just a measure and you know I start to think of it as fuel and if I feed my body enough I'll have more calories I'll have more energy to burn and so overall like I feel a lot better my performance is a lot better yeah and I think you know when you eat in a deficit for such a long amount of time you just feel so fatigued. You have no energy. You feel flat. Your performance is pretty shit at the yes. gym. You don't recover and you just, your mood is shit too. Like you would mm-hmm. know all this as well, Laura. Like you just don't yeah. feel your best self. Yeah. Like I was stuck, you know, eating 1400 calories for so long. And I was like, why am I not losing weight? Why am I not losing weight? I mean, 1400 calories and I'm not losing weight. And I was just like, what is happening? And I'm like, surely like this is low calories already. If I cut out any more food, I'm not going to be able to survive the day. Legit. Um, and yeah, so, you know, what I did was I actually was like doing a bit of research and things like that. So I actually did a bit of a reverse diet. Mm -hmm. Um, where I slowly added a few more like I went straight up to maintenance and then I added like a you know 100 calories each week a little bit more a little bit more and then I went all the way up to like 2600 calories so nearly double um, my amount of calories and I probably only gained maybe like one or two kilos and I think the biggest learning for me through that process of doing a reverse diet is getting comfortable being uncomfortable Yes. Because when you're in a reverse diet, you're going to feel a little fluffy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's short-term pain, you know. Well, not it's not pain at all because you're eating more food and you're like, oh, my God, it's amazing. But when you reach kind of like 2,600 calories, you're like, oh, my God, what else can I eat? I'm like, I still have a 1,000 calories for dinner. <laughs> but as soon as, you know, you kind of reach that level and then you start cutting back the calories because you think about, you know, you want to drop a little bit of weight. Mm. I dropped down to maybe like 1800 calories or something and I lost weight and it blew my mind because I was stuck at 1400 for so long and nothing was moving. But here I now was eating 1800 calories and still losing weight. And like, obviously now like my, you know, my eating's a lot better and my metabolism's a lot better and things like yeah. I could still eat like 2000 calories and still be in a deficit. Yeah. Um, so it's just 
you know, it's that short term pain where you've got to get really comfortable being uncomfortable, learning to eat more, learning to feel your body um, to kind of get to where you want to be. So you want to think about eating based on what your goals are when it comes to training. Because when I'm training, usually like I'll eat at maintenance um, or sometimes I'll eat in a slight surplus just to build up my strength, especially when I'm in like, you know, like when it comes to like one reps or two reps at the gym where I'm pretty much maxing out like a lot Mm. of the weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, But when it does come a bit closer to comp, I'll cut a little bit. So I'll do a really slight deficit just so I can cut a bit of weight because with powerlifting, you have to fit into certain weight classes. And I'm kind of like in between like, one at like under 63 and under 69 I'm kind of like at the lower end of 69 well I was like well I don't want to compete with those girls because they're so strong yeah. um so and I was like you know what like I'll just yeah I was like either I have to gain like a whole lot more like weight or I just yeah. cut a little bit and then you know I give myself enough time before the comp to actually yes. go back to maintenance as well so yeah. I don't want to be in a deficit while I'm competing um yeah. because I want to make sure that you know I'm eating at maintenance fueling my body so that I'm peaking in the lead up to comp and on comp day as well but yeah it's just yeah the biggest mental barrier and I can't say this enough and I say to all my clients is just Mm -hmm. getting comfortable being uncomfortable yes and I love that you have said that because that's the thing right like we have these magic numbers that get thrown out all the time and the 1200 calories and the 1400 calories Mm. and then people are just getting at these plateaus and they don't really like they don't understand why it's not working But then when it comes to eating more food, it's absolutely terrifying. It's the last thing that they want to do because the thoughts come, I'm going to get fat, I'm going to get weight, gain weight, I'm going to ruin all my progress and X, Y, and Z. But you explained it so perfectly in terms of being able to increase those calories to, you know, to maintenance, which a lot of people really don't know how to eat at. Hence the reason why people are going up and down, up and down, Mm -hmm. losing weight, putting it back on, right? Because they don't know how to eat at maintenance. But then because when you sit at maintenance for a long period of time, then what happens, you can then diet at such a higher amount of calories. And of course, all the benefits that coming with eating more, I'm going to say this to like I die, right? Like in terms of like feeling like yourself again and, you know, having energy and increasing in the gym and lifting heavy weights and feeling really good and strong and empowered and building muscle and just feeling all around freaking amazing. Yeah. And not being afraid to eat out. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. (laughs) God, that's a whole different thing, right? The guilt and the shame that comes with it. And that's it. It's because we've been conditioned to these low calories and that we can't eat out because there's so many, I don't know about you, but so many clients come to me and they're like, well, I've lost weight before and I kind of a little bit scarred because like I had to follow this really strict meal plan and mm. I wasn't allowed to eat out and I wasn't allowed to have this and I wasn't allowed to have that. Now I can't eat bread because I feel guilty every time. Yeah. So it's hard, right? So, so hard. Yeah, um, I just, there's just so much out there and there's so much misinformation and there's so many like, you know, people selling like, you know, 30-day diet plans or 30-day yeah. challenges and mm-hmm. it's just what can they do in the long term that's super sustainable and build those habits that they can just do for the rest of their life um, rather than just like a quick short-term fix. Yeah, and that's something that you said before in terms of like it takes years of training and you're Mm. referring to like people building muscle and those bodybuilders, but now like you yourself in this powerlifting space, it's it's not a 12-week thing, right? This is something that we have like committed to for the rest of our lives and that's a conversation that I'm constantly having with my clients. It's like, hang on a minute, like, yes, you know, you've signed up for this 12-week program because that's just the length that my programs run for, Mm. but this is something now that you're going to, like we're changing your habits, we're changing your lifestyle so you can, you know, (laughs) do it for the rest of your life without (laughs) <laughs> and learning how to eat out without guilt, right? <laughs> yes, definitely. There's so much good food out there. So like life is not food. fun if you're not eating good food. I meant to that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to the gym and question in and around exercise because I know there's a lot of women out there who's doing cardio and doing hip. And one of the biggest things that I hear people say actually is like, weightlifting is boring like I don't like lifting weights and I don't like it because you know I'm not huffing and puffing and sometimes I don't feel like I'm actually having a good workout Mm. so have you ever had this and if so were you how were you able to help your clients you know find enjoyment and pleasure out of it 
Yeah. I mean, if they don't feel like they're huffing and puffing, if they're doing weights, they're not working hard enough. I know that. So I literally <laughs> said that on my Instagram story two days ago. I was like, I just did some walking lunges and I was effed. <laughs> oh my God. The worst. Anything single leg. I'm like, oh my God, I'm dying. <laughs> um, No, honestly. And I think that's, you know, when you're training with weights, you want to be training with intent. Like if you're just sitting there yes. cruising through like 30 bicep curls and it feels like nothing like what are you yeah like what are you doing like up the weight do 10 reps you know work with you know within two three five reps of failure and Mm. then tell me that you're not huffing and puffing (laughs) um and I think you know for me like I think cardio is boring because I just don't like walking on a treadmill and I'm just like, I just can't think of anything worse. Like, honestly, like, you know, walking on a treadmill for 30 minutes, you're looking at the same thing for 30 minutes. Would you not rather do weights? I know. I hate the <laughs> There's treadmill. There's so much so variety. <laughs> <laughs> Legit. But honestly, just from my experience, like, you know, I do get clients who might say, you know, weights is boring, but that's just because they're going to the gym. They're doing random workouts. Yep. They're not following anything that's planned or structured for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're just not sure what they're doing. So I think when mm-hmm. you're not sure what you're doing, you kind of, you're not very interested in it. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you go to the gym and you walk on the treadmill, you do the bike or something like that, it's safe. Like you're like, okay, yep, yeah, like I can do that. But as soon as you venture out into like weights and things like that, you know, you see a lot of women who do random workouts that they find on Instagram. I used to be the same as well. I'd mm-hmm. scroll through Instagram, be like, all right, what am I going to do next? Yeah. Um, or you, you know, just figure, look at around, see what machines are available. But that's not how you get results. And I think if you get the results that you want, it's going to give you that motivation when it comes to training. So yeah. where you get results from is following a structured program and it's doing the same exercises every week for a period of time. So the boring stuff that no one ever really posts on Instagram. So it's not your squat into lunge, into bicep curl, into overhead press. I don't know. On the BOSU it's, ball. <laughs> oh, my God. It's literally the basics that work and it's the simple stuff that works. And if you follow that structured program and you apply progressive overload, so doing a little bit more each week, whether you're adding more weights, more reps, more Mm. sets, doing it quicker by resting less, that's where you're going to get the results from. And I know it can get boring doing the same thing every week. So I actually change my clients' programs every, you know, four to six weeks, depending on how they're feeling. But programs work yeah. up to like 12 weeks or even longer yeah. than that. And when I do change their program, I don't change it that much. Like it doesn't, like I'll maybe change their reps or I'll change, you know, like a goblet squat into like a barbell squat. So oh, yeah. they're still doing similar movements, but it's just getting them to buy into the program again, giving them something new and shiny um, variety, that they can yeah. do for the next four to six weeks and they don't get bored. And then once they start seeing the results and how mm. strong they're actually getting with weights, yeah. um, they love it because they can mm. see how much more they're progressing. And I always remind them, I'm like, remember when you started with me, you were doing like, yes. you know, like a two kilo um, like goblet squat and now you're doing like 30 kilo barbell squat. Yes. So it just gives them that motivation to keep going. And they're in awe of themselves as well because they're like, oh my God, was that where I started? I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I think you're bang on in that in terms of like, I remember when I started my first ever exercise program with a coach and when I started applying progressive overload properly for the first time, Mm. literally like the results that I saw in six months in comparison to everything that I tried, like over the last three years, like with all the hit and cardio stuff, I was like, holy shit, like this is the magic thing. Like why aren't more people doing this? Because it's like you get the results in your body, but you also get that the feeling that we've talking about in terms of the strength and the empowerment. So I love that in terms of, yeah, we got to start training smarter, not necessarily harder still training yeah. hard obby but <laughs> yeah and you don't need to be at the gym six seven days a week <laughs> oh god no oh, like, enough for me. like three four days like that's more than enough if you're being smart about your training mm-hmm. um and you're training with intent um yes. not just cruising through the session each one yeah. yeah I literally had a big conversation with my clients in my little community that I have and this week was all about are you training in with intention like are you going in and are you saying to yourself you know oh, I've got to smash through this as fast as I can or you're pulling out your phone and, you know, looking at emails or, you you know, is your headspace not really there? But like just that little switch and being able to be in the moment and being in the training session, you're going to get so much more out of it. And when you get more Mm. out of it, like it's like, you know, you're more efficient, you're getting better results, you're, you know, getting lifting heavier weights, better range of motion. 
yeah aesthetics and then also just that feel good feeling so I love that training with intention so important yeah so one more last question that I have what are some pieces of advice that you would give someone who's intimidated by the gym afraid to lift heavy or maybe even afraid just to increase their calories what are some tips that will help them build some confidence and overcome these barriers um a couple of the tips and I probably mentioned this before is go to the gym at non-peak time so during the day rather than after work where every like Tom Dick and Harry is there it just means more weights available more machines are available and if you feel like people are watching you there's less people so no one's really watching you but they're probably not anyway <laughs> um Absolutely. yeah uh, I used to even go with like a training partner as well. Yeah. Um, this really helped me a lot because, you know, you have a friend to talk to, you're working out with them to like, and you're too busy to talking to them or working out to even notice that anyone's around you. Mm-hmm. Um, so that definitely helped having a structured program. So you're not trying to walk into you and be like, all right, what am I doing what now? Do I do? Scrolling through Instagram. So you've got something to follow. You can plan how you want to attack that session. You know, you're yeah. like, all right, I need to be here, here and here because this is where the weight section is. This is where this machine is. Um, so you know exactly where you need to be at the gym throughout your entire session. So it yeah. just helps build that confidence because you feel like you know what you're doing. Absolutely. And you probably already know what you're doing. You're just not too confident in yourself. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing, and I know this is going to sound super salesy for me, um, but just get a coach or a PT. Like, honestly, I have a coach and I've had a coach for a mm. few years now who trains me because I want someone who knows more than me to help me with my technique so mm. on things that I need to work on and help improve my strength. And I find that having a coach really just helps you build that confidence because you're having someone there who's going to give you feedback and everything that you need to, you know, lift more efficiently. And so you start to feel more confident. You're like, oh, okay. So I know what I'm doing at the gym and what I'm doing is correct because that's what coach said and things like that. And plus like, I'm sure you do as well. Like we spend a lot of time writing programs as a coach. (laughs) Um, I spend a lot of time writing programs for my clients. Then the last thing I want to do is write my own program. Absolutely. I want someone else to do it for me. And we've got to practice what we preach, right? I'm like, if I'm a coach, I want to know what it feels like to be coached by someone. And it just makes me a better coach to my clients too. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I have a mindset coach. That's why I have a business coach. And Mm -hmm. I recently had an exercise coach, but I've recently broken up with them. Um, But that's a whole other story. But exactly the same, right? Like we only know what we know. And that's, Mm -hmm. I think, a testament to ourselves in terms of like we value, you know, getting better and then being able to help our clients. So, of course, that's where we're going to be, you know, upskilling and investing and, um, yeah, really growing and evolving. So, yeah. Thank you so much for this chat, Jeannie. I know so many people are going to get so much out of it. If people want to get inspired by you and and connect with you or come chat in the DMs, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram. So um, at Jeannie V Fitness. So Jeannie spelt like I dream of Jeannie. So (laughs) J-E-A-N-N-I-E. I mean, I haven't really been posting that much since the new year because I'm like, oh, I haven't planned my content. Oh, God, I don't even get me started on planning content. <laughs> it's on my to-do list that I haven't even touched. <laughs> oh. Oh. And just to, one more thing to wrap it all up is what's next? What's next for you? What does the next three months, six months look like? Uh, so this year for me, um, with my training, I'm working towards competing in states um, this year. So got a couple of comps lined up. And then if I qualify for states, which I will, hopefully, yeah. um, based on previous comp totals. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, the uh, Australian Powerlifting Union, the states comp is towards the end of this year. So from states, hopefully qualify for nationals. And then, yeah. And I think it's just a lot of fun. Like, I just, I love it. Like, I think the vibe that you get on the day of comp, like, it's amazing. Like, you just run on so much adrenaline. Oh, I love that. I'm such a competitive person. And that's why I've, like, kind of steered away from competitive stuff. Because it, like, (laughs) I I go, I spiral. I'm, like, I'm the type of person that has to win. I'm, like, got to be really good. So that's why I'm, like, yeah, not for me. But that makes me really excited for you. (laughs) I think it's probably a good thing why I didn't grow up playing competitive sports. So. Oh, I did. <laughs> like always, thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye.